Okay, let's go to John chapter 15 and verse 1. John 15, verse 1. We'll read about eight verses there. And uh, I'll try not to preach past 12. Uh, Y'all know I ain't long with it. I think Nathan holds that title, don't he? All right, let's look at what the scripture has to say. Amen. Every, just remember, every time we read the word, uh, just see what you can grab out of it. See what the Lord can do for you in your mind to help you through the scriptures. Uh, let's just be for real. Sometimes you may not get nothing out of it. Other times, you know, you never know. Depends on uh, what's going on in your life. But uh, God's word is is always great for us. And uh, it's like. Sometimes you may go over things in God's word and you may not understand it now, but later on something happens in your life and the Lord reveals you what you're reading, what the scripture means. Amen. So just ask the Lord what you can get out of this scripture this morning. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which, ye have, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Amen. Can you say amen to that this morning? Without Jesus, we can't do nothing, can we? We can try for a little bit, but it doesn't work, does it? Verse 6 says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, which is burned. And ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Here it is, my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Amen. Now, I appreciate the illustration that Jesus gives here in the book of John. Uh, here again, agriculture, right? Uh, using a tree to explain how we should be in our life. Now, I want to preach this morning just for a few short minutes on being connected, just, just this good connection in your life. Uh, keeping that in mind as we go through some more scriptures here, uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of us want to see uh, a real, sustainable connection in our life. But how do we get that? How do we get that connection? Uh, oftentimes we miss out. We miss out on what could have been because of a bad connection. You know, whenever you're going down the road, especially down 2011, and you hit that little spot there by the bridge, I don't care whose phone you're on, who you're talking to, get ready, you're going to cut off, right? We all know that. It's going to cut off. And don't matter what you're saying, don't matter how important the conversation is, if the connection is severed, you're talking away on the other end of that line, and you have to call them back. Well, what's the last thing you heard? That connection was lost, that bad connection. Connection is vitally important in my life, your life, all of our lives. The connection. We see that in John uh, chapter 15, this parable that Jesus spoke of, of this tree. Uh, uh, the connection that we have to have for it to flourish, for it to survive 
You can take a branch of a branch of a, a tree. You can put it in the sunlight. You can stick it in the ground. You can get put plant food around it, but it's a dead branch, right? It will not grow. It will not stay connected uh, because there is no roots there. There's there's just nothing there. Uh, you and I, we are what? We are extensions of Christ. Extensions of Christ. An apple tree cannot have one branch that produces oranges and the rest of them apples. Amen? Are we producing what we are called to produce in our life? And if not, we have to just take a moment and figure out where the bad connection is. I had a sprinkler system I was working on uh, a week or so ago, and we replaced the pump, we replaced all kinds of parts, and we replaced the computer system, and everything about that, but we found there was just a couple wires that were not connected where they should have been. Isn't that something just the way we can apply that to our own life? You can have a lot of things right in your life, but because of a few wrong connections, it shuts your whole life down. What great vehicles we have outside that we rode to church in this morning. You can have new tires, you can have uh, new seats, new leather, uh, everything about that. But if there is no fire in that battery, it can shut that $80,000 vehicle down, right? Because of some bad connections. That's pretty simple stuff, isn't it? I mean, that's elementary. God help me this morning apply that elementary thought. This is elementary here, what Jesus is speaking. Amen. About the connection, except ye abide in me and I in you. You, you can't bring forth fruit. We can't produce what God has called us to produce unless we are abiding in Him. Amen. A building is always a reflection of the materials used to build it. Cheap materials, cheap building, right? So, so goes in my life. Cheap prayer life, cheap devotions with God. You know, a cheap experience with the Lord and just, you know, kind of barely hanging on by a thread. The results follow. Amen. Signs of a good connection. Your desires should reflect the desires of Christ. The desires that God wants you to desire. Praise the Lord. When you want what he wants. When we want what the Lord wants. When we want to please him. Amen. I think about, I forget who sings it. I think it may be a country song. But it, uh, the word stuck out to me. said, always stay humble and kind. Anybody ever heard that? Always stay humble. I can't remember the rest of it. That just stuck out to me. Always stay humble and kind. Amen. If we'll take those concepts, amen, and always stay humble before the Lord. Amen. As Brother Nathan preached this morning, teach whatever, teach whatever you want to call it, uh, it was great. Amen. We, our character uh, our kindness, our love toward what is our motives behind the things that we do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, your, your desires for one should be the desires for the next person. Amen. Uh, especially whenever you're trying to outreach, whenever you're trying to reach out to someone else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, I want to have a good connection with God, don't you? Praise the Lord. Psalms chapter 80 and verse 8 says, Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou preparedest room before it and didst cause it to take deep root and fill the land. God can cause our life to take deep root. That's what I need to do in my life. How about you? I need the Lord to cause me to take deep root. Root. Can anybody else say that? Don't you want God to help you to take deep root in His Word, deep root in the things of God? Uh, let's be for real here this morning. You, you know, we got to have a desire, don't we? We got to have a want to. Where, where does that come from? It comes from God. 
Amen. It comes from prayer. Amen. If you, if you don't feel it in your life this morning, if you don't feel God, the best thing for us to do is to find us a place in prayer. Amen. And go between me and God and say, Lord, please give me that connection that I need. Amen. I may not have that connection, but I need that connection in my life. I need that want to. I need that desire. Praise the Lord. God can give us that. Uh, Psalms 80 verse 10 says, The hills were covered with a shadow of it, and the bows thereof were like the goodly cedars. She sent out her bows into the sea, and her branches into the river. Now that, this is describing of a tree that has taken deep root. Amen. That is what our life can be like whenever we take deep root. Amen. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. No more than going to McDonald's makes you a Big Mac. Amen? That is not what makes us a child of God by attending and doing certain things. Amen. What makes us a child of God is being connected into the power of God, being connected to Jesus Christ. And it's very simple. One cooking show, he's always saying, and it's real easy to do. You might remember that one. It's real easy to do. Let's don't overcomplicate serving the Lord. Amen. I think sometimes that you try to bypass the connection and move on to all different. You know, that's just the devil's plan for you. He wants you to get all confused and all tangled up. With this and that and the other. Amen. He wants you to forget about all about your connection. Amen. Can anybody here this morning truly say if that humbleness toward you, between you and God is there? The devil can't trump that. He can't do anything with it. Whenever you got a humbleness between you and God. And say, God, I want to please you. I want to serve you. Amen. That's where it's at. We can't bypass the roots, what I'm saying. Amen. I think we're doing that a lot of times. We're just grabbing a branch and trying to stick it in the ground and shove some prayer around it and this and that and the other. And we're not really connected to, to God. Understand me, I think going to church is important. I wholeheartedly recommend it. I think my livelihood in God depends on it. But I'd be the first to say that going to church is important only as it leads you into a greater knowledge of God's word, of God's goodness, and a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Just to put it in a different way, our name on a church row is not going to do it, is it? It isn't going to be enough. Oh, but I need to be connected. Connected to the power of God this morning. The joy of the Lord. We read about that, uh, you know, in the Old Testament, about the, I believe in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, about the joy of the Lord being our strength. Amen. The joy of God. Where does it come from? It comes from a connection. Being connected to the Lord. There's a lot of things that mess up our connection. I think we all know what that is. But maybe we could check our connection this morning. If you have been unconnected, we can connect back up. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to stay connected. The Jews in Jesus' day had the name, but they lacked the spirit, didn't they? Jesus was always contending with the Pharisees. Anybody know who the Pharisees were? In your mind this morning, who is that? Who is the Pharisees? Pharisees were those that they thought that they knew all about God. And when the he that come was he that was supposed to come came, they didn't even recognize him. 
They could not accept Jesus. In much the same way, the church today bears the name of Jesus Christ. The question is, how well do we really know him? Do we really know the Lord this morning? Back in verse 4 and 5 of our text scripture says, Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He states some things here. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. I cannot do nothing without the Lord this morning. And see, once we're cut off from that wellspring of God, from the Spirit of the Lord, we begin to wither and die. You can go out today, you can cut a branch off of any tree you want to, and probably by the time the sun goes down, or especially in the morning, you will see the leaves start to droop and, and wilt. They start the dying process automatically when they are disconnected from the root system. So goes in our life. Amen. Let's stay connected this morning. Another scripture in Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. See what the apostles said? Increase our faith. The apostles. Get that. The apostles. Those that were followers of Christ. Increase our faith. Luke 8 and 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they had heard go forth and are choked out with the cares of and riches and pleasures of this life. And bring no fruit to perfection. We can be. That, there's that connection again. We can be disconnected by what? By the cares of this life. By different things that's going on. Riches, pleasures, whatever. Amen. He's not saying they're wrong here. But we can be choked out by them. If we're not careful. Colossians 2 and 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him rooted and built up in him established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving amen rooted and built up in him praise the lord uh you know i heard someone say this week that uh you know reading the bible from genesis to revelation is is really good it's great but it's better to read one chapter or one book of the Bible and understand what's that, what that is saying to you than to read from Genesis to Revelation just for the sake of reading it. There's a lot of truth to that. Colossians 2 and 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, for in him dwelleth all fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwelleth all fullness. I need him this morning. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Isn't that amazing that God designed it that way, that all you needed was Jesus? Let me ask the question to you this morning. If you have Jesus, is that enough? I believe it is. If I got Jesus, that's enough. Because what is Jesus this morning? He is the root. What does John 15 say? If you abide in who? Me. That is Him. So He is the root. I'm the branch. He said he's the vine. I'm the branches. So if I abide in him, that's enough. What's going to happen if you're abiding in Jesus? If you're abiding in the source. If you're abiding in the one that gives life. If you're abiding in the life giver, what's going to happen in your life? There's going to come fruit in your life. You're going to grow. There's things that's going to happen in your life. Everything stems from Christ. 
At first, one would think, no, that's not enough. I need this, I need that. But my friend, if you're drinking from the well, everything is going to flow from that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can do without that one ingredient. You can do away without living in Christ and try to live everything in this book. You'll wither away and die because you're not connected to the vine. And ye are complete. This is Bible this morning. And ye are complete. In who? In him. Which is the head of all principality and power. The righteousness shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. Shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Now, my friend, if you or you know someone that doesn't seem to have it all together, maybe it's their connection. Maybe it's my connection. That's what we need to look at. Am I connected to the vine? Am I connected to Christ? 2 Peter 1 verse 5 says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Which is love. We haven't been told that this morning. For if these things be in you. Listen closely. He says for if these things be in you. And abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren. Nor unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If these things abound in you. Oh amen. How many of you this morning need these things to abound in your life? I sure do. Praise God. Come on the piano, Kim, if you can. I'm going to wrap this up with the scripture. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through 4 says, And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Even they had a, got a lot of good works in this church. Thy labor, your patience, all of these things. But we can see here in verse 4 that they were disconnected, weren't they? They were disconnected. Amen. I pray the Lord would uh, remind us this morning of our connection in Him. Amen. As we come to the altars this morning, amen, just pray about that connection in your life. Amen. Take inventory. Where is that connection at today? Amen. Maybe you had it last week, last month, last year, whenever. Amen. But am I connected to you, God, this morning? And if I'm not, Lord, help me, Father. I want to be connected to you. Amen. Let's come this morning. Amen. I'm going to pray before you come. Father, I pray, dear Jesus, Lord, that this word that you have spoken, Lord, uh, and John, Lord, I pray that we would take heed to this, Lord, and apply it to our life. I pray that you would touch each and every one here. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.